Hey folks, welcome to today's edition of Knowledge Base Training. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to go ahead and just essentially create your first meeting room. Uh, in order to go ahead and do this, you will need to make sure you have the correct license assigned to you. That is going to be a meeting host license. Um, people that can do that are going to be administrators. If you're an administrator and you're wondering how to do that, um, be sure to check out my previously created video on that. It's going to be on the channel as well, um, how to assign Connect User Licenses. Very, very easy steps. It's going to be on the back end here under the admin section. Um, but again, in order to go ahead and create your first Connect Room, you're just going to need that meeting host license. Um, so to go ahead and get started, we're simply going to go ahead and click on the Meetings tab here. And um, from here, we're going to click on New Meeting. Um, this wizard is going to run you through a couple sec uh, steps here, but to be honest guys, it's only really going to take you maybe 10 seconds to come in here and create a room once you know all these different forms and, and on all these different options. Because um, for the majority of you users, um, some of this stuff's not going to change. And Connect's kind of smart, and it's going to remember your access setting. It's usually going to remember the audio line that you're using as well. So again, once you kind of have a hang on things, creating a room takes maybe 10 seconds. Um, so the first step is simply going to be to name the room. Um, so I'm going to call this Kyle's office. Um, now, when I name these rooms, I don't really name these rooms after a specific meeting. The reason for that is because you guys may or may not know that Connect is persistent. So we can use these Connect rooms over and over and over again. To give you an example, my personal Connect room um, that I've done thousands of trainings and demos on with some of you guys as my customers, I've been using the same room for three and a half years. Um, that just kind of goes to show, again, the persistency of Connect. So I don't name my room after a specific you know, meeting or, or training or, or date. Um, again, I usually keep it something rather general. Uh, I think mine's just called Kyle's room. Um, but if you guys wanted to, you know, be more specific, you certainly can. You guys can always change the name of the room after the fact. Um, the one thing you cannot change after we go through this, though, is the URL. So once you create a URL for your connect room, that is going to be set in stone forever. So that is going to be our next step creating a link and customizing the ending of that URL. I highly, highly, highly recommend, I can't emphasize this enough, um, that you guys go ahead and actually take the extra couple seconds to go ahead and customize that link. Um, so I'm going to call this Kyle's office. And I'm going to be able to add an extra E on there because I think I've already created a, a URL with that name. But essentially what I'm trying to get at here is if you do not customize a URL, it's going to randomly generate numbers and letters for your URL. And that's not going to be very helpful. Visually, now I know exactly where that link is going to. I'm going to get, I'm going to be able to, to decipher, hey, that URL is going, you know, straight to my virtual office. And that's going to be easy to decipher. If you just have random numbers and letters, you're not going to be sure which, you know, connect room that's going to, especially if you are creating multiple connect rooms. So this makes things easy. Um, now, the next three items, I actually generally never touch. The reason for that is because this stuff is used in Connect's criteria for its internal invitation system. Um, you guys may or may not use this. I personally do not use Connect's invitation system. I use my own method. And the only thing people need and your attendees need in order to come into your Connect rooms is this link down here. Um, so all I simply do is in Word, I have a little template pinned right here. And when I click on that, you're going to see here that Again, the only thing people need is the link to the room, but I've kind of created a little template here. So it's got some information. Hey, here are the details for our call. I'm letting them know, hey, audio is going to be handled inside the room. And then I've got a little test diagnostic um, that folks can run if they're scared about not being able to have access, you know, the first time they try to go into a connect room. And all I do is just simply copy and paste this into an Outlook meeting invite. And that's it. So because of that, I actually skipped the summary. The start time. I don't really worry about either because technically the room starts as soon as you create it and then it's available to you 24 7 365 um, so that's not going to matter and then same thing with the duration i'm not going to touch that it's not as though after an hour our connection room is going to close down on us it's just trying to say hey you know for this meeting that kyle is scheduling if kyle were using the internal system it's going to go for about an hour but as long as you the meeting host is inside the connect room that room stays active forever so again, as long as you're in there, you can have a meeting that runs hours, minutes, days, up to you. As long as you're in the room, it's live and it's ready to go. Um, so moving on, we have templates. This is something that's going to be helpful to you guys more so as you guys get more comfortable with Connect after you've created several Connect rooms. If I've created a Connect room and I like the way it's set up, but I don't want to continue using it, maybe I do want to go ahead and create a new room. 
um, you'll be able to use templates to go ahead and actually create a duplicate clone of that room. And uh, my colleague Eric Crawford actually created a video on our channel on solely this. So if that's something you guys want to learn a little bit more about, again, there's already a video on it. Be sure to check that out. Um, and so we'll go ahead and move on. Language, English, obviously we have a couple of other options as well. Uh, and then access. So I've got a couple options here. First one is registered users only. So if you guys have access to the events module, if you guys have access to Adobe Connect for webinars and you're setting up registration around your Connect sessions, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make sure you use the first option. If you're not including that registration piece to your Connect session, maybe all you own is Connect Meetings, I recommend either the second option or the third option. Because the second option is gonna allow for registered users but also accepted guests. And a lot of you guys that come in on my sessions, that's how I have my room set up. It adds a little bit of barrier to entry because I'm basically acting like the gatekeeper, you know, almost like the bouncer at the club. I've got my clipboard. As people try to come in, I can either choose to accept them, deny them, or, you know, wait a little bit later to take any sort of action. Um, and then the third option is literally unhindered access. As long as they have the link to come to your connect room, they'll be able to come right on in. So open doors, open office hours, essentially. But with any of these options, you guys can go ahead and add a password. Just check off this box right here, add a password, and you can go ahead and change that password whenever you want. So there's a couple of cool steps that you guys can alter and change in terms of how folks have access and how strict that sort of security is that you're building around entry into your connect rooms. Now, up next, is our audio settings. So you have the ability to choose whether you wanna do a VoIP only meeting, which is gonna be your first option. VoIP is voice over the internet. Um, we've talked about it in previous videos. Basically, you're just using a headset. Um, so if you wanna do a headset only meeting, no telephony at all whatsoever, you're gonna select that first dot. If you guys do wanna include an audio conference line, you do wanna include telephony. You can select the second option and then go ahead and select your audio profile from the drop down menu. If you guys are curious, as to how to go ahead and create an audio profile and set up a phone line. Again, that is another video we have on our channel here. Um, sorry to go ahead and direct you guys to all these other videos, but again, we've covered all this stuff already. Um, and that's only a one-time setup. Once you've set up your audio line once, you're good to go. And it'll be available to choose whenever you're going ahead and creating a new connect room. In my experience, never ever do the third option. That third option does not get captured in the recordings, and in no way is there any affiliation between that telephony line and your connect room. So just pretend the second option, or the sorry, pretend the third option is just not there at all. Um, additionally, um, that's it. So if you guys do want to, we can always go ahead and you know go to the next step and select participants to add to the session. Again, I, it's something I generally never do. Um, and you can use Connect's internal invitation system if you want. Um, but if you come full circle and we scroll back up here, we're really pretty much done. Um, you name your room, you customize the link, we can skip this stuff, choose our access, choose our audio, and then we're done. So we'll click finish and our Connect room is created. I just had to select for the VoIP only. So that's it. Um, your room's created. If you want to enter your room, click on the link and um, that's gonna go ahead and launch your room for you. If you need to go back and change anything that you had just made, um, you can change the title. Again, anything can be changed, except the one thing that cannot be changed is the URL for the connect room. Um, all of your recordings will be stored right up in here, um, and you guys can save as many recordings as you want per room. And additionally, um, all your reporting is gonna be up here as well. So you guys can sort reports by sessions, uh, and even polling question data my questions here and of course when you do have some data as you guys are using your connect rooms um, obviously that will populate but then you can also download it via nice excel file format um, so hopefully this video is informative um, if you liked it smash that like button um, subscribe uh, to our channel as, as we're going to be constantly coming out with new content to help you guys and support you guys in being successful with adobe connect thanks everyone bye-bye